Yeah, I think first of all, the thing to say is that I am absolutely shocked uh, and grateful as well at the number of people that showed up to this. this. is literally the last session of KubeCon EU. So thank you very much for showing. You must not have a plane that's leaving soon. You're probably leaving after one of our speakers who has a plane at seven. So let's get this thing going and get, get out of here. <laughs> All right, so this is the introduction and deep dive session for the Crossplane project. Uh, we are all maintainers and contributors on the project. Uh, we're going to share some of our knowledge and experience with you. So first of all, what is Crossplane? Uh, just a quick introduction to it. You can think of Crossplane as being a framework that you can use for building your own cloud native control plane or uh, platform. Uh, you can do it declaratively, where you don't have to write any code to make this happen. Um, but then let's also take a step back and say, what is a control plane? So uh, a good, lot of good examples of control planes are things like uh, AWS or GCP. They, you know, they've been using control planes for years. If you ask for a, re a cloud resource in, in their back-end services, they've got a control plane running to do all the orchestration of the machines, the storage, compute, et cetera, to provision and dynamically give you services. So that's a control plane. Kubernetes, obviously a control plane as well, orchestrating your uh, applications, containers, pods, et cetera. But there's a lot more resources than that, right? Uh, so Crossplane is something that will help you build your own control plane, but with all sorts of resources beyond just you know, containers and applications, databases, caches, buckets, all sorts of things. Uh, and, and it allows you also to put your own opinion into that control plane. We're going to get into a lot of details on that, as this is just the first slide. But let's think about Crossplane as two points of extension. So when you're building your control plane on the back end, there's all sorts of ways with providers you can extend the control plane. And basically, anything with an API, you can now manage with Crossplane. Uh, you know, all the cloud providers, on-premises services, et cetera. Then on the front end side, uh, you, know, you can aggregate these resources together and declaratively say, hey, this is an API or a, um, you know, an abstraction that I want to give to my developers to be able to access my control plane. So we'll go into the more details about the back end and front end uh, extensions of Crossplane as we get into more slides here. Uh, so right, this is part of the maintainer track. This is, uh, you know, it's a CNCF project. We originally donated the Crossplane project to the CNCF back in 2020, and then we moved to the incubation uh, milestone uh, late 2021. So you know, it's a neutral place uh, for multiple vendors, companies, organizations, individuals, contributors, etc., to come together and start enabling and building control planes together. Uh, so it is a community, and you know, that we're glad you all are here, and we want you to be part of the project as well. Uh, we're not going to go into these numbers here, but the project is growing, right? Like we have this many people here at like 4:55 on the last day on a Friday, so you know we're we're growing, and there's lots of ways to get involved in the project uh, to continue being a part of it. So I'm going to hand it over now uh, to Stephen to start with some of the details uh, about managed resources. Thank you, Jared. Is my microphone working? Yeah. Woo! All right, thank you. So we're going to talk about probably the fundamental concept of Crossplane. If you understand this, it's really going to help you understand pretty much everything else about Crossplane. And this is something called a managed resource, right? So what a managed resource is, it's a Kubernetes version of something that's external to the cluster. It could be anything. In our demos today, we're going to talk about cloud resources. But if you've been to some of the other talks, people have been talking about managing things like ships and trucks. Um, basically, anything with an API could be managed by Crossplane. So let's talk about examples of this. Um, in the case of AWS, what kind of things do you want to configure? Um, there's hundreds of things you can configure on each of the cloud providers. In the case of AWS, it would be things like certificates, uh, queues, uh, EKS clusters, uh, databases, and networking, right? So what Crossplane, you know, our goal is with this project is with all these resources that are available in AWS, can we manage these using Kubernetes? and using all the things, um, you know, all the tooling that you have, the GitOps tooling, uh, all the controls you have around it, um, you know, things like validation webhooks. So what does this look like in a Kubernetes context, right? So we're representing external objects in Kubernetes. So that means that we have to translate things that are in a uh, remote state into Kubernetes. So the first thing I want to show here is um, the YAML that we use in Crossplane is basically 100% native Kubernetes, right? So things like groups, versions, and kinds are supported. Uh, we use the same kind of API versioning that's used in Kubernetes. It's all standard. And then you'll notice here that every single kind represents one resource on the remote cluster. Um, in this case, like in the case of AWS, some of the providers have over 700 of these that they install. Um, and then we have metadata support, right? So every object, like in Kubernetes, is named. Um, you could also add labels and annotations to this. So like if you want to label that this resource is owned by your dev team, you could just add it there and um, you can manage it however you manage labels in Kubernetes. 
And then finally, we have the spec. Um, the spec is the desired state. Uh, this is what we want the remote object, the state, to be. And we have a special stanza called for provider. So this is what we actually send to the remote API server. And um, this spec in a managed resource is high fidelity, right? What this means is that if the cloud provider has 100 different things that you can configure, uh, Crossplane will have 100 different settings here. That's the goal of a managed resource, to be as high fidelity as possible to the remote resource. Um, how does this work? Well, when you apply a YAML to your cluster, um, there's two things that get installed when you install a, a cross-plane provider. One is all those CRDs that we talked about, and that could be dozens or hundreds of CRDs. Um, so those get installed, and the API server using the CRD mechanism starts watching for changes in those. And then we install a pod which is a controller that actually manages and knows how to talk to a back-end API server. So what happens is this is running all the time, and it's watching for any creates, updates, or deletes on the API server. Um, so when you apply something to the cluster, it's going to say, I know I, I'm looking to manage RDS kinds. So when this gets applied, any change, update, or delete uh, will go to this, and then this will immediately start talking to the AWS API. Now, there's two things that a controller does. First, it asks, does this resource exist in the cloud? And if it doesn't, it's going to go do a create. Um, if the resource exists already, it's going to create a calculated difference, and then it's going to go and change it. Uh, the controller runs continuously. So this is a declarative state. So anything you want here, Crossplane will attempt to get this into the remote state. So that's the spec. That's the desired state. Now, we want to communicate. There's a two-way communication with remote APIs. So what comes back is the status, right? And this is the at provider. For provider goes out, at provider comes back. And in this case, when we create a bucket, um, AWS will give us an arm. And then there's um, the other thing that comes back is events, right? Like uh, providers don't generate standard out or anything like that. They generate events that you could use whatever eventing system. So the kind of events you'll see, you'll see errors, you'll see inability to authenticate, you'll see creates, updates, or deletes, right? So if you collect your events, this is how you can monitor things. And I think that's a very quick update. And so I'd like to do a very um, a demo of a managed resource just to show you what this looks like in practice. So what I have here is just a, um, let's see here. So I'm going to show you a bucket. And you can see here, again, this is very simple. There's hundreds of things we could set, but this is the minimum. And you can see here, we have a region selected, um, a name. Uh, you know, we talked about groups, versions, and kinds. And we're going to create a bucket in US1, with private ACL, and we're going to add a tag to it. Excuse me here. So this is how you create objects in, in Crossplane, right? Like you're not running a script or anything like this. You're just applying a desired state to the cluster. We've uh, created it. Um, we're going to go. And now we could just get this, right? So immediately, see, it hasn't done anything yet. Um, so we could watch this, right? So what's happening now is that we're just you know, watching what's happening to this resource. And Crossplane is asynchronous, right? So it runs as all controllers. It runs in a loop. The controller saw that something was requested. So now what it's doing is it's syncing. It's saying, can I communicate to the remote API? Um, and then when it gets to be ready in a few seconds, and now it's ready, right? So now the bucket has been created. So you're not like running a script or anything. You just say, hey, create me a bucket, and eventually the bucket will come to a ready state. Now, if you're doing things like creating a VPC or a subnet, um, things that depend on that will not become ready until this becomes ready. So there's kind of like a, a, an internal dependency mechanism within Crossplane, but it's a little more decoupled. So we've created our resource, and now what we could do um, we can see what's going on there. So we've just created this resource. And you can see here we have a bunch of conditions, right? We got our at provider that I talked about. Um, and then we have conditions, right? So all the things that came back. Um, so in Crossplane, you're not looking for like the output of a shell script. You're looking at um, the conditions. And the other thing that's important to note is probably one of the more important con um, is the concept of an external name, right? So um, this is the way that Crossplane can match a Kubernetes object to remote. Right? If you don't have this, Crossplane thinks the object doesn't exist. So in terms of like backup or restore or something like that, this is the one piece of data that Crossplane uses to reconstruct in Kubernetes what the remote state is. So this is, uh, and I think Chris talks about this a little bit in his controller writing, but this is really an important concept in Crossplane. This is the kind of the link between um, remote and on the cluster. 
And finally, um, let me get here. Um, sorry there. Uh, sorry, it's, it's weird to type on this keyboard. Um, and then, yeah, finally here you see the um, you see the events that are being created, right? Like that we could create a brand new event here. So this is how you would know that it's been. Um, so I think in terms of my time, that's. Um, yeah, Yuri now. Yeah. So yeah, let's delete this bucket and then I'll move over to Yuri. He's going to talk about composition. Thanks, David. Can you folks hear me? All good. Thank you. So, hi, I'm Yuri, and I truly believe that cross-plane rocks. Sorry, I always dream to uh, say that from stage, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a quick one. Okay. It's apparently a full screen issue. Yeah, sorry for that, small glitch. Yeah, so uh, as Steven uh, demonstrated the core ability of uh, cross-plane to be able to describe any cloud resource Kubernetes way. So you inherit uh, automated configuration, drift, uh, reconciliation loop, and all that Kubernetes, core Kubernetes powers. But uh, so it's already very powerful, but cross-plane has more. So Crossplane uh, provides you visibility to uh, dis and create your custom platform API, which, which is very specific to your use case, to your company, to your teams. And with the help of uh, composition and composite resource definition, you can implement all of this custom logic uh, a declarative way without any uh, coding. Uh, no need to write any kind of Golang code for controller or any kind of code. Everything is declarative. So this is a simple illustration of, uh, uh, of the following comp concept. So here we, we define our custom cluster API. So it's purely coincidence. It's not copy project, it's just uh, our custom cluster API, which we implement uh, to create uh, managed services, uh, uh, managed Kubernetes service uh, with associated uh, cloud, uh, cloud providers. So we have uh, two composition in that case. One is AWS and uh, another GCP. And these compositions are actually like a collection of dependent resources which can uh, create your very custom clusters uh, uh, from uh, managed TKS down to Helm chart and services like Prometheus on top. And same for GKE. Uh, the core concept uh, uh, behind that is that you provide a stable API for your consumers, like pro platform consumers. Frequently, it's uh, application developers in your company. And they are not exposed to any complexity uh, of underlying infrastructure. So how actually uh, we can do that? So we have a special uh, kind composite resource definition. So it's called XRD. Uh, so it's very similar to Kubernetes standard customer resource definition, but it extends as Kubernetes uh, resource model. We can define a custom API group, which is very specific to a company, and describes the desired uh, API with a standard open API v3 schema. So pretty standard stuff, very, very similar to CRD. So how to actually implement the logic behind this uh, XRD definition? So again, you don't need to uh, code anything up. You can use uh, special kind composition, and uh, which would satisfy the associated composite type. And uh, you will list, uh, uh, you'll create a list of managed resources that this composition will manage, right? So uh, you can, uh, if we, can create analogy from a Terraform world, it will be like kind of Terraform model or as like a server-side Helm. So everything is server-side. There is no client job uh, here at all. So this is uh, like a list of static resources, right? How, so how to make it more dynamic? So we have a concept of patches. Uh, so we, we can propagate the data from uh, composite resource, uh, which we uh, uh, define, uh, create, instantiate out of uh, uh, composite resource definition and associated claim. 
Uh, and we can propagate this data down to uh, manager's source that is composed by the composition, right? So you can expose only required, uh, uh, only required, required API fields and uh, name these API, uh, API fields uh, as you like. And uh, in addition to that, we pro provide a, like a runtime transforms uh, uh, for uh, as a form of patch. In this specific case, we have uh, like uh, we abstracting the instance types in some uh, cloud provider, and we can expose to our teams only like uh, internal namings like small, medium, large, and the actual meaning of the small, medium, large can be defined by platform builders. So. We can actually uh, make a live demo of this stuff. Yeah, uh, first of all, what we actually trying to achieve, right? We want to expose uh, this minimalistic API to our customers. We uh, want to hide in a complexity of uh, underlying resource, so if we just for the sake of co quick comparison, right? So that's a uh, managed resource of RDS instance in AWS, and it's just some possible values there, actually. I don't know, uh, hundreds of them uh, for to configure the RDS, specific RDS instance. And we want to encapsulate a uh, platform builder, logic and parameter security, all that stuff within a composition and exposed to our developers only required parameters. Like in this case, it's just, uh, uh, just the size of the database and a password secret to pick up from. So that's the goal. So how to implement that? So exactly as I mentioned in the slide, first we uh, want to uh, describe an uh, XRD, a composite resource definition, right? So again, open API v3 schema. It uh, it describes the required parameters of storage size and a, uh, a referenced password secret name. So pretty straightforward. So the only thing we, we should do is just instantiate it. So we, def we defined uh, this um, custom platform API uh, right now. What we should do next is actually to implement it. Mm, and we should we will implement it in the form of associated composition. So there is a, a composition that satisfies uh, this uh, previously created XRD, right? Uh, PostgreSQL instance. And it composes a couple of resources, the main one, like RDS instance itself, and associated param custom parameter group. So here we have like just a couple of resources for demonstration, but it can provide you a picture how we can compose arbitrary amount of resources in the dependent one, and we can create a composition of different complexity. And yeah, we have, again, we have a patches, and uh, 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 with which we can propagate the required data from uh, claim instantiation. So as you can see, uh, here we propagating the size uh, with this from, from field pass to field pass of, uh, of composed managed resource and everything from the associated claim will be uh, propagated uh, to the uh, resources that are composed. And one important difference, so a composite resource is a cluster scoped one, and a claim is uh, almost the same, but it's a namespace scoped one resource, which is designed to be consumed by uh, platform consumers. And XRD is a scope of uh, platform builders. So how we actually, uh, now we are uh, changing ahead, and we are going to so we built our custom API, we implemented it in the form of composition, and we are now can consume it as a platform, as a application developers, a platform consumers, right? So we just making uh, we applying the claim. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, our claim is created. It's our custom resource, right? Our custom example org database gr API group and a PostgreSQL instance, our custom abstraction. So that's uh, exactly what we want. Uh, we have a shortcut get claims, so we can see 
the status. You can obviously get describe any, any stand, standard um, standard a, API. Uh, use any standard uh, cube control co commands over this resource. So as you can see, uh, this claim is uh, created. So, so we can use this uh, a full pass to it and uh, see the status. It's uh, not yet ready. It's, uh, a database takes some time. So current status composite resource claim is waiting for uh, resource to become ready, and we can uh, get managed. It's a, a standard cross-plane shortcut to get all the list of all managed resources that is uh, uh, current cross-plane instances is managing at the at the time. So as you can see, uh, both the composed managed resources were created. So it's a parameter group and RDS instance itself. And just for the sake of end-to-end uh, -end demonstration. You can go to RDS and uh, double check the actual state. Was it applied by crossplane? I just refresh the page now. Yeah, so we have a custom group. It's visible, but I'll go to database instances. It's a, our crossplane deep dive instance in a creating state. That's why it's still waiting for uh, for the database to be ready. And we can go to configuration and check. Uh, uh, parameter groups, yeah, and so it is referencing a custom cross-plane deep dive parameter group, <laughs> which was created as a part of the composition. So that's pretty much it for the demo of a, a custom platform API and custom abstraction power. And we can uh, proceed with the provider uh, extension. Chris, please yes. join the stage, and we'll do a small magic of laptop uh, uh, laptop change. Yeah. Thank you. So, microphone is working? Cool. Then, hopefully, also the beamer. So, then, um, let's talk about extending cross plan. So as we said in the beginning, so crossplane is highly extensible, and it's a framework to build uh, universal cro uh, control planes. Um, there are both sides. So one is uh, the backend side. We call it uh, providers, and uh, with the providers, you can, uh, or you in general can build providers and manage any anything or any API out of the world. So you get CRUD operations for cloud resources on premise and whatever you want. Um, on the front-end perspective, we call it configurations. So that means you can compose your resources from the providers together. Um, you can define your control plans, declarative APIs, and abstractions like we see before. And um, this is, at the end, that what your dev or your customers see and um, what they can consume from your control plan. And we also take care of um, the provider versions in general if everything we have is available. Um, so let's have a look here at the visualization. In the middle of it, we have uh, our cross-plane control plan running. Um, we have um, on the bottom level the provider resources or the providers and the resources. So thought about if you want to um, create a Kafka cluster for your uh, customers and um, you have two cloud providers available, in that case AWS and DigitalOcean, and it doesn't, ma it, 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 it's, it doesn't matter if uh, the Kafka cluster is running on AWS or DigitalOcean. Um, as a creator of the infrastructure here, you can say, okay, AWS, we need the following version. For DigitalOcean, we need the following version. And for Kafka, we check this. If it's not available in your Kubernetes cluster, then we set it up for you. And uh, on top of it, you have all the configuration stuff, so the composition compositions, the, uh, the uh, represent representation, uh, what your app devs can consume in your control plan. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the ecosystem. The ecosystem, I think, in the la last months is growing and growing uh, in the community. I think normally folks starting using uh, the public uh, cloud providers, so like AWS, Google Cloud, um, Azure, DigitalOcean, whatever, and set up, for example, Kubernetes cluster. And then you can thought about, okay, I need in my Kubernetes cluster, if it's ready and available, Helm charts. 
um, Kubernetes manifest, whatever, and then you start with the next providers, and so you can get a lot of uh, resources composed from your control plan perspective, and then you see a lot of guys uh, starting using more and more, so I thought about GitLab runners, whatever, then you also need um, tokens, what, and you can create it in the GitLab APIs, and then you can move it back to your cluster, and yeah, um, as announcement, I think today in the ecosystem, there's also now a provider available for uh, Ansible. So you see folks adopting more and more stuff um, in the ecosystem. So um, let's talk about a little bit about uh, the internal stack, how we build our providers in the platform. At the very bottom level, we have Kubernetes runtime. So ru the runtime um, takes care of running our controllers, our Docker containers, um, and also things like ingress services, load balancer in front of the services. And um, on top of it, if you're not aware of programming in Kubernetes, there's uh, something like machinery. So this is how the APIs are composed together in the cluster and uh, a lot of other cool things around. But the thing we need here is uh, the custom resource definitions. So that means if you create custom types, in your cluster and you want to use it like real native Kubernetes objects. So thought about in subnet group for Elastic Cache, you can set it up then and um, it feels completely like Kubernetes. You can cube cuttle, describe, get, delete, apply, everything. Um, then the next layer is the uh, controller runtime. So I think almost every um, Kubernetes operators are using parts of the controller runtime. Um, the controller runtime helps us uh, in general for the reconciliation stuff in Kubernetes. Uh, it helps also to watch um, for resources. So if, if someone changed um, the resource in the cluster, then it helps us to get, or the, the, the runtime knows what, what happened there. Um, on, on top of it, there's the interesting thing from the community here, and uh, this is uh, cross-plane runtime. So normally, um, a lot of things are built as operators for Kubernetes, but we build things in Kubernetes for APIs that we can manage them. So thought about everything we can manage in external APIs, so create, update, delete. And um, this is, I would say, like uh, pre-configured for you, and um, you can um, thought about your custom logic. So what, what, what do you need to do for, for updating stuff, etc. And the rest is here. And uh, the very cool part here is um, you can use your, your tooling from your uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. So like Helm, Customize, Flux, Argo CD, whatever on top of it. And then you have your <laughs> cloud infrastructure completely as Kubernetes flows. So let's have a small demo how easy it is to implement a new resource in one of our providers. So I will change to my Visual Studio, I think it's there. Okay, um, in general, this is one provider here from Crossplane Contribution Repository, it's provider Jet AWS. Um, let's have a short look. I said to you we want to implement a custom type um, subnet group for Elastic Cache. So we open this and you see now a lot of auto-generated uh, stuff, so like the types from uh, parameter groups, replication group, clusters, users in the Elastic Cache group, um, and the specific API version. And what we want to do now is to go um, implement the subnet group. We can scroll a little bit. There's a config folder, and in the config folder we have provider go. This this one. And as for reasons with um, scaling issues with a lot of CRDs, we need to uh, enable or include um, the resource for generation. So we can do this here now. So this is uh, at the end strings here for the resources. And then we have um, configurations. So config, elastic cache, config go. And what we see here, here's a uh, configure function. And uh, what we can do now here is to add a resource to the configurator. So I prepared this. So you can see now here it's also AWS Elastic Cache subnet group. We uh, specify now the uh, API version uh, in the cluster. So I pick it up from the other uh, resources here. And um, Stephen 
talked about external name, and we're using here name as identifier because this is represented in the external API. So let's save this, and then it's very easy. We have make, make script and steps there, and we make make generate. And now the resource are generated, and it also looks for all the other generated stuff here. And in a few seconds, we can see a new generated CRD, and we can apply it in the cluster. I will show you this. It took a few seconds. I uh, can scroll there. We have here now a package folder and CRDs folder, and they are all um, CRDs inside. So it's finished now. You can see there was one green thing. And what we can see here now, okay, cool. There's for Elastic Cache, a subnet group now available as a new CRD. Um, we can apply this in my uh, cluster. So QCCL, yeah, apply um, the subnet group. Then the next thing we can do is um, to run the provider here locally because it's now in my uh, environment. So we have also make run. And now the provider is starting up, looks for all the CRDs in the cluster and start managing them and also the stuff out of it. So clear, kubectl, get managed. So we pre-installed the VPC and two subnets because we need subnets for subnet groups for Elastic Cache. Uh, in AWS, you can see it, everything available. And what we can do now, kubectl, apply, minus F. Examples, subnet group. I will show you the subnet group directly. Um, also set it up. So you can see, I'm using now our new uh, CRD we created, so Elastic Cache. Here's, here you can see the version, the kind. So it calls KubeCon example in reaching US West 1. We have a description. And the magic of references uh, are used here. So we need from the subnets not only the metadata name, we need the ideas because AWS API needs the IDs to create this. And let's have a look. KubeCTL, get. We can have a look here. So you see the new subnet group is uh, ready true, sync true. I will go in the AWS console, and you can see now here the KubeCon example is there. So we implemented a new resource in the controller, mm -hmm. uh, in the provider for AWS. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, finish. Is the microphone on yet? All right, so yeah, we'll go ahead and finish up this uh, session here. I think we've just got one or two more minutes. But as we said before, you know, this is a community project. It was donated to the CNCF. Uh, so, you know, there's lots of opportunities to get involved with the project. Uh, you know, if there's functionality or things that's missing, get involved, you know, open issues, give us feedback, contribute uh, pull requests, et cetera. Uh, so a great place to start is crossplane.io. That's the website there. And then all these other links you can basically find from there. But we're super active on Slack. Um, you know, we'd love to meet more of you all and talk to more of you all. Um, so with that, we can go ahead on into, I think, maybe one question or so. And then I'll be here. I don't have a flight to catch. So I, I'll be here to continue talking afterwards if you want to come up. Uh, yes, you're right here in the first row there, or second row. Oh, nice. Thank you so much, brother. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my question is, I'm uh, Do Do we have any control on, on the transition between one state and the other? Or it's up to the provider to decide what to do? Because I can imagine in, for some resources, you know, it might be important if I recreate or I, I modify, like, you know, those kind of decisions. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, you know, something that I think a pattern you'll find in general is that, you know, much like other controllers uh, in the Kubernetes control plane, uh, you know, everything running in crossplane is, you know, actively reconciling an eventual consistency is interesting there, uh, interesting point there. So, you know, when certain transitions can't necessarily happen yet, uh, you know, the act of reconciliation will continue to try to drive, uh, you know, the desired state that you have in the actual state to, to eventually reach there. If there are more complicated sequencing or, you know, other types of op operations, I think there's uh, probably some 
some declarative ways to d describe like uh, this depends on this resource or you know we need this value from here and once again eventual consistency and active reconciliation will make that happen over time so you don't need to intervene or you know be very specific with it and then if there's further cases that in my experience over the years so far, it's tend to be fairly minimal. Uh, then there is uh, an upcoming feature that's going to be an alpha uh, sometime soon where you can write some, uh, you know, uh, let's say, like imperative code to make some decisions and control the logic even further. Um, you know, right now, you can write the whole thing in code if you really, really wanted to to make sure exactly what you wanted to do is possible. But then otherwise, uh, declarative stuff and only when you need to pop into code, then implement it in code. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's do, do a quick time check. Yep, so that is all the time, but I'll be right here to, to keep talking if you want any more questions. And thank you so much for everybody for the whole KubeCon week, I'd say. Thanks. Thank you.